welcome to W is for welcome to our community on the Political Trenches Local Government Network. Our guest today is Meredith Maywood, Tourism Specialist at Tourism Oxford. Meredith was recognized as the 2022 Ontario Tourism Champion of the Year for her, her exceptional work, which included supporting her local businesses to recover from the severe economic challenges posed by COVID-19. Under her leadership, the county has also gold level certification with Sustainable Tourism 2030 and has received a provincial award for sustainable tourism. So with that, welcome to the political trenches, Meredith. Great to meet you both. Thank you for having me here. So Meredith, I'm going to ask you to explain to me for a second and to our listeners and our viewers, what is tourism from a tourism specialist perspective? Oh, uh, <laughs> tourism is a way to celebrate and um, get to know a community. Uh, I really, I'm really big on relationships, and I think tourism is an opportunity to make new friends from afar. Uh, yeah, it's it's a way to celebrate who we are and to welcome people into our world. Thank you so much for that. So I want to kick off by talking about municipal tourism a little bit, and particularly the rise in digital marketing. Uh, from your perspective with uh, Tourism Oxford and Oxford County, how can municipalities leverage online platforms and social media to reach a broader audience and attract tourism from both local communities and international markets? Yes, and it, it is a constantly shifting environment uh, when it comes to digital. So basically, uh, when you're looking at that, uh, costs are going up. Uh, there are constant changes in how the software works and how people are engaging with it. So it's really important to be adaptive and very flexible with your tactics. Uh, the first thing though really is what is your product and are you reaching your audience? So, you know, you've got to have the right photos, uh, the right text, things that will speak and resonate with the people you want to come and they will find you, but you still have to get out there, try adapting and using some of the new features and be efficient with your time. So for instance, if you have a newsletter, are you pushing that out through your social media channels as well? If you're doing reels, are you also using Miss Shorts on YouTube? Uh, and the huge gem is you've got to have partnerships, uh, especially if you're talking about reaching a further audience. So for example, we're in market right now, but we're in market in partnership with our regional tourism organization, Ontario Southwest and Destination Ontario. So we're reaching, reaching a way larger audience than we could have on our own. Hmm. So when it comes to your specific area, though, in Oxford County, how do you decide what's unique about you? Because presumably you're trying to differentiate yourself from somewhere else to bring people in, whether it's digitally or physically. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, and I think that's why the conversation really has to start with what's your unique story? What makes us Oxford County? Because when you're talking about that, you're not competing with anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, you're distinct to your area. So for us, uh, from a unique selling proposition, obviously, um, we're very easy to get to. Uh, we're located on Highway 401 and 403. We're two hours from three border crossings, 90 minutes from downtown Toronto. So that's the proximity component. Then when you get here, for a lot of areas, there's a long drive between stops. We don't have that. You're about 10, 15 minutes to the next thing down the road. And then when it comes to product, uh, we're really celebrating our place and our people and what we bring to the table. We're calling that our DNA. So how the land, uh, man-made and natural, um, inspires us to do what we do. So whether that is someone who's worked in a factory and in the creative economy and is a bit of an engineer and then takes on doing something new. Uh, like offering up crokinole boards and selling them internationally. Uh, or, or we're the dairy capital of Canada, producing over a billion glasses of milk a year. So we have a cheese trail here uh, and we've got the cheese to provide it as well. So yeah, just really picking what makes your community unique and celebrating it. Okay, you can't just drop cheese trail and say nothing about it. What's a cheese trail other than perhaps the obvious? <laughs> Thank you for asking that question because I wanted to. <laughs> it's a path made of cheese. Oh. Brilliant. <laughs> Obviously Follow not. The cheese but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. Yeah, so uh, basically, it's over 32 businesses that have come together in Oxford County to celebrate our cheese and dairy past and present. So basically, it's 32 stops where you can go and you get to taste, tour or take away something from Oxford County. So for instance, going to a museum and you learn about the mammoth cheese that was made here in the 1800s that went off uh, to travel England. Um, you know, and we have a very bad cheese poem about it. <laughs> uh, it's going to a restaurant and uh, eating local cheese, going to cheesemakers, but also ice cream manufacturers uh, that are producing unique products for you to sample and taste. And then we have artisans that complement that as well. It's a really well-rounded tourism product. So for instance, you could go into the forest, learn about uh, Carolinian Canada, and then go into a workshop and build your own charcuterie board with a woodworker. So it's it's a very broad, uh, very program, and it is getting us international attention. Maybe when we go to Oxford County and we can get the cheese trail to per, like sponsor us and we can do a <laughs> full episode of us just traveling the cheese trail. Um, but as we have listeners who are traditionally in the municipal realm, I've got to ask because you, you, Oxford County is quite unique because you have an a separate entity, Tourism Oxford, which promotes tourism as a, as a, as a as a whole, and there are municipalities striving to promote themselves as tourist destinations who may not have an arms organization like Tourism Oxford. What potential challenges should municipalities be mindful of to avoid negative impacts on their community when it comes to tourism? So tourism actually is a service of the County of Oxford. I fall under the CAO's office, uh, but we promote the area. We're the destination management organization. Um, so when we're talking about what we want to promote for the area, we're very passionate and wanting to ensure that tourism growth isn't at any cost. Um, it's taking into consideration what the residents want, what the businesses want, and what the visitors want. Um, we're all at the table together. Uh, so for me, it's really important when you're developing tourism, and I do like wearing the sustainability hat because I live here as well and I love here. Um, so, you know, what can we promote that we have the capacity to promote? So, for instance, during COVID, you weren't finding us promoting things that didn't have a capacity limit in place. Um, and we were going out and we were supporting the businesses. Uh, we were really looking at trends and saying, for instance, we think UPIC tourism is going to be huge this year. So we brought all the UPIC producers together and provided training to help them to prepare for the influx of visitors. So they were prepared, had a wonderful season, and the visitors had a great time. So it's really that planning and deciding where you want to invest in tourism and what has the capacity for that investment. Can I challenge you a little bit on that statement? <laughs> And I apologize. Absolutely. And I apologize because um, every tourism sector, every tourism business believes that their business is important. And I don't care who you are. And you, you just said that you have to look at what the market is looking at and you promote where the market is going. Is that hard to do? Because you as an organization, I'm assuming you would want to promote all tourism spots, not just pick and choose. But at the end of the day, you only know that the market and the promotion can only adhere to so much. How do you pick those? And how do you know that what you're picking that what's coming up is going to be successful? So when I was saying that, what I'm referring to is those natural elements we all have in our communities. So for example, um, I'm not going to be promoting a trail that doesn't have the capacity for visitors. Okay. So it's more so those natural elements for the community. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to promote them, but we need to have the amenities in place to make sure that the tourism is respectful and that everyone has a positive and enjoyable experience. I, I appreciate that. And I apologize yeah. for putting you on the spot there. Oh, no, that's I, I, great. I, Before I throw it back over to Ian, I have one sort of odd question. Municipal tourism is not something that a lot of municipalities are doing right now because with COVID-19, you, you mentioned the elephant in the room. So I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room for a little bit, if you don't mind. Have you seen a rebound since COVID-19 uh, for from a tourism perspective? And what are you looking at in sort of 
the metrics to ensure that the tourism is, industry is as, as successful or more successful than it was prior to the pandemic? Yeah, and I will say that is a complicated question with a complicated answer. I love, com <laughs> we love complicated answers on this show. <laughs> I could chat with you all day. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, you know, some sectors uh, obviously had challenges and COVID had impact on the community. Um, so basically, you know, like the value of real estate here shot through the roof. So some people accelerated their retirement plans and closed their business during that time. Uh, you know, and then consumer habits changed, but in a positive and a negative way. So during COVID, our farm producers had a really good year, um, for the most part, you know, depending on what the, you know, if they didn't have issues with capacity, um, you know, for people just coming out and shopping the farms, they were very busy. Uh, but then, of course, you know, other sectors, it was incredibly difficult. Um, so that kind of like for answering how it went during that time. Um, since then, we're seeing growth. And I will not say that all growth has come because of tourism. But we're seeing with that growth is they're investing in tourism. So they're seeing the potential here. And that's really exciting. So for instance, in the last three years, three cheesemakers opened up. Uh, we have two Nordic spas in Oxford County now. I have a new hotel being built currently. And I'm expecting more hotel renovations in the future. Um, and when it comes to monitoring and making sure we have that growth, we really work closely with our regional tourism organization, Ontario Southwest, and we do data analysis. So we're looking at, you know, how many people are coming to the area and staying overnight. We're looking at who is interested in coming to the area and monitoring our marketing as well as our visitor inquiries. So we are keeping track of that. And then we're also always constantly looking at what's next, who's the next market we could be reaching out to. You've, a lot of what you have talked about seems to be kind of long-term inherent to the county and the region. You mentioned Southwest Ontario. What about uh, event attraction? We we know some places are the home of sports tournaments or games of some sort. Do you do those big splash short duration events as well to attract a different type of visitor? Uh, so in Oxford County, um, we don't have a convention center at this time, um, but we will be getting one in the future. Uh, so for events, we do have sports tourism happening. We keep in touch with the municipalities about what the capacity is at the arenas, but that's really a uh, entity that isn't at that level that you're thinking of in some of the larger municipalities that actually have a division for that. Um, we actually have a team of three for Oxford County <laughs> in tourism. Um, but we do have one major event here, which has a huge impact on our community, and they have their own permanent property, uh, and that's the Discovery Farm where Canada's Outdoor Farm Show is held, and that is a huge benefit to our community, and we're there at the International Tent every year, uh, welcoming international visitors and media. Neat. You've mentioned uh, early on about the, how you, as a person or as a, as a role, fit within the county structure. Obviously, the CAO, and then there's council about that. Do you, how do you, how supportive are elected officials or how do you engage elected officials in either supporting what you've currently got or supporting initiatives that you're thinking about in the future? Yes, so we submit a business plan every year uh, to the county as part of the budget process. Right. And that gets reviewed and approved by council as well as sending in uh, reports to council on a regular basis for projects that we are doing uh, to give them an update. We usually do that at least once a year. I have another report going in a couple of weeks with our annual review of 2023. Uh, and then of course we have our industry newsletter which councillors are receiving and they get regular updates through that as well. And they can come out to our events and do. I wanna talk about the international versus domestic tourism um, for a second, if you don't mind. Um, what is the best practices to attract domestic tourism, the people who are in your own backyard? Because when I speak to municipal leaders from across Canada, it's they always chuckle whenever I say people would rather in Canada go off to X, Y, or Z country because it's nice and warm and we're a nice cold spot, especially as we're recording this, uh, even though Wyerton Willie said six less weeks of winter. 
How do we promote ourselves domestically, locally, to bring Canadians to our backyard? Because we all have great stories to tell municipally across this country. And trust me, I've spoken to enough of the councillors from Oxford County to know that I'm looking forward to visiting. But what are the best practices that you do as Tourism Oxford to promote, attract local residents to your community to keep their economic dollars here? Yes, so our main focus actually has been domestic tourism. So I'm happy to talk about that. <laughs> uh, we are just getting more and more traction on the international front right now. Uh, so for domestic tourism, it's really what type of travel are they looking for? Uh, coming to Oxford, they're probably not looking to come for five days, uh, but they're probably looking to come for two to three days for a little mini escape. Uh, so it's knowing what product you're offering. So for example, right now is the perfect time for kind of a couple's relaxation escape to Oxford. It's winter, but you're not dealing with a ton of snow. Um, if you're not into the ski hill, it's a great place. If you want food and relaxation, hit a Nordic spa, take in a theater performance, visit our art galleries, uh, and have some great food and explore the cheese trail along the way. Cheese isn't seasonal. It's not something that comes out of the ground. <laughs> so with that in mind, is there best practices that or advice that you would give to other uh, destination marketing organizations like Tourism Oxford to across Ontario and even across Canada that you would say, you know what, the best way forward in 2024 is X or the best way to attract those domestic uh, tourists that we have sort of successfully done, you would be best to do this. What, what advice would you give other DMOs? So really for every region, the answer is going to be different on what the product is, but it's really looking at what your strengths are and then moving forward with those, but really looking at development to fill the gaps or the opportunities that you see. So for instance, like looking at what Destination Canada is doing right now and what they're really interested in seeing development is, uh, is in rural tourism and shoulder season. Um, so how can you tap into some of those things that are happening at a national level, um, but are also happening for us on a regional and provincial level? See where you can align yourself with the things that are going on. Um, we've always looked for alignment. When we developed our cycling, um, when we developed our first original strategy for the area, um, I was looking for alignment with what the province and what the region were doing hmm. and where it fit well for our community. Who comes up with the ideas for how do you, we talked about, started off talking about what makes Oxford County unique. I mean, this is, is it you and your staff? Is it a chamber of commerce? Is it the businesses themselves are just looking to grow themselves? How do you come up with these concepts and ideas and eventually decide what to roll out? We uh, have really worked closely with our businesses uh, and we really strive to have a strong relationship with them. So it's understanding what they're interested in, where's, where can we align with that and support them, and where we can work together. So we've done a lot to bring businesses to work together. Um, so that's kind of how we've accomplished what we have and come up with the ideas. We've also worked with consultants. So when we were starting the Cheese Trail, uh, we worked with the Culinary Tourism Alliance. And they helped us develop the model and bring the partners together to develop the cheese trail. When it came to developing our cycling routes, we worked with Ontario by bike uh, and they helped us develop cycling routes throughout the uh, county. So we do bring in the experts as well. And I think that's so valuable to get that information and to learn from them having them at the table. So you uh, just my last question, perhaps for you is. Just to build on that a little bit, uh, you said earlier on, too, that you see yourselves as a region attracting visitors, so you don't necessarily compete with nearby municipalities, but do you see yourselves in competition with elsewhere in Canada or even elsewhere in Ontario uh, as a region to bring in people? I, The only kind of competition I have myself personally is being internally competitive, <laughs> so am I bringing forward the best product that I can in my work? Um, but, uh, so I see us all growing together. Like we learn from each other. You know, I was on a national call probably what last month and, uh, we're sharing ideas on that call. Um, you know, I am right, I'm a half hour to 45 minutes from Lake Erie, uh, in wineries. I'm not a wine region. We're known for hops, which gotta love a good okay. IPA. 
but uh, I benefit from our neighbors and they benefit from us. Um, you know, we had a group come through of um, a couple, they were touring Ontario. We all got a chance for them to come and explore the area. And I was giving recommendations for the next place they were going. Thanks. So uh, uh, I have one last question before I do my last sort of wrap up question. And I want to talk about trends. What trends are you looking at in 2024? I know we are literally a month and two days into the 2024, but I'm assuming you were looking, and I shouldn't assume, but I, I, get, I would assume that you were looking at what is coming up in the future of tourism. While more and more people are looking for that individual experience, what are you looking for in the tourism trends in Oxford County and or even in the tourism sector as a whole when it comes to municipal tourism? Uh, so when looking at trends, like obviously I'm looking at what the consumers are interested in and we monitor that on a regular basis. Um, so from that perspective, like obviously uh, outdoors, shoulder season, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, making sure everybody feels welcome when they come here and that we're moving forward in a sustainable way for our community are some of the key areas that I'm really watching and trying to learn in. Uh, and then when it comes to locally, where are some of those new opportunities? Like you have to keep your, um, you need to keep an eye on the heartbeat of the community and what are some of the new opportunities and people that might not have been ready to come to the table a year ago, but are now, and how can we work with them? So besides Ian and I doing the cheese trail in 2024, and as we have listeners and viewers from across Canada and potentially around the world, what tourist destinations do you recommend in Oxford County? And are there any big events coming up in 2024 that you would recommend people coming to see? Yes, I'm asking the Sophie's Choice question here to the <laughs> tourism specialist. <laughs> Well, you must know tourism specialists are very evasive at offering a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can tell you, uh, you know, there really isn't a bad time of year to come here. It depends on what you're looking for. Like if you're wanting a quiet, romantic, relaxing getaway, now is a great time. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to come and really embrace the outdoors and the farms, um, summer is great and the festivals kick in. If you've got a Dotson, come at the end of June. We have a wiener festival. <laughs> and they'll have over a thousand wiener dogs there. <laughs> um, yeah, wiener and dogs and cheese. Oxford County's new logo motto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Dotson's. And maybe you come to Big Cheese Taste in May and you could carve a piece of cheese into the shape. Now we're talking. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, every Saturday in May is Big Cheese Days. So that's when there's mammoth meals, deals, and experiences <laughs> along the cheese trail. Tourism is fun. It should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't take it too seriously and you got to keep it lighthearted for people. And we really try to do that. I feel like we should rename this to C is for cheese. For I know. Tourism. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Um, Meredith, uh, I want to thank you from both Ian and myself for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us and talk about tourism in the municipal sector. Uh, it seems like it, uh, Oxford County is well served with you in tourism, Oxford. So thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Chris and Ian. It was so much fun. Thanks, Meredith.